Uh, my name is Jorge Guerra. I'm with the FAR Police Department. Okay, my name is Officer Michael Mata, and I work with the FAR Police Department. Officer Cantu, FAR Police Department. I honestly, uh, I was a, I'm a veteran, so I was in the army before. Um, so I was going to college and I got tired of sitting in a classroom. It really wasn't for me. So I actually wanted to be a firefighter. Um, so I applied with the city of FAR, like kind of like to get my foot in the door. Um, and I started, to, I started being a dispatcher and at the FRPD. So I kind of started seeing what cops would do on a daily basis, you know, like, you know, respond to accidents, respond to disturbances and stuff like that. And I thought it was interesting. And um, it was an easy transition for me. So I just applied as a police officer and ever since then, I've been a police officer and it's, it kind of just came in second nature, you know, being a veteran and, you know, helping people and stuff like that, you know. I became a police officer because I was bored at the job that I was at. And I saw an ad on the new, we actually was not on the newspaper, it was on television. And it was back then about almost 20 years ago. McAllen PD was hiring and I was looking at it and I said, hmm, maybe I might want to work as a police officer. It looks fun and fun. So I applied at the police department after I went to the police academy. Uh, became a police officer, hoping to help people in the community. Expectations, you know, like movies, you know, you car chases and running after people, but I mean, it's really more helping people out and it's become more of that, you know, you get calls to the serpents that people having problems and issues and that's more of what it's become. I expected the world was going to be all butterflies and unicorns and everything was going to be great, but I, I learned pretty quick that that was the case. <laughs> expectations you know I don't know I wasn't really clear on the, what expectations I had coming in I figured it'd be like I said a, a good way to help the community I didn't know exactly how I'd be able to do that uh, besides from watching you know just regular cop TV show that I was never really around police officers growing up It's been good. It's been hard. Uh, a lot of changes going on. Um, um, it's a different generation of people, a different culture. Um, it's gotten more difficult. People have different mindsets on laws and rights and what what they believe is right and what they believe is wrong. And I learned that as an officer, you need to treat people with respect and you need to address their problems and their, sit their situations that they're having and try to find solutions for them. And I feel that me being a police officer, I can contribute to the community and to the people that have problems, um, contribute solutions so they won't have the problem anymore and they can live a happy life. It's been a very good one. You get to see all the, all the good side of uh, people and all, all the bad sides, but overall it's, it's been very good. Um, all of the above. And I, on top of that, having to be like a lawyer and a counselor and it's just, it's, it's an interesting job. Um, you do a little bit of everything every single day. It just, it varies from day to day, call to call. All of the above and a whole list more because we we are referees, um, we are people that first responders when people are having a crisis, um, people that are having heart attacks, we're there first. We're usually there before the ambulance. Most of the time the ambulance will post, they'll park somewhere and wait for us to get there until the scene is clear and then they show up. So a lot of times we're there at the scene first, uh, even before fire department. Um, so we have to know what we're going to do when we get there. So it's a lot, it's a lot of work, it's different things. A little bit of everything, mostly we're here to maintain order. That's mostly what we do. we got to keep people who can't 
You gotta sort people's lives out who can't sort their own lives out, for the most part. Trainings. Um, at the police department, um, trainings from um, how to deal with uh, how to deal with canines, you know, to uh, how to handle a missing child, uh, somebody who's been abused physically, emotionally, um, um, how to respond to active shooter incidents, um, dealing with drunk drivers. Um, I'm a veteran, so I've had extensive training with, with weapons and military tactics and stuff like that, so. Uh, I'm assigned to the crisis negotiations team, so we do a lot, we deal a lot with people in crisis. I also deal with people that are mental problems and mental patients, uh, people that aren't taking their medication, people that you see running around the streets naked uh, with high fevers that are about to either die, run into a car, stuff like that. We try to stop them, try to talk to them, try to see what their problems are, and try to fix them. Um, We've had a different kind of training on cultural diversity as well, uh, defensive tactics, um, traffic laws, penal codes, code of criminal procedures. There's a lot of different things that we have learned. What are some trainings that you have received? Uh, we get a lot of trainings at this department. Uh, DWI, crime investigation, interdiction, there's a lot of trainings we receive. Um, yes and no. Yes, because the police department does, our, our department does try to train us and keep us uh, as up to date as possible. Um, there's just never enough training to deal with day-to-day -day calls and situations, so, so that's why it's a yes and a no. Um, a lot of the stuff you kind of learn on the go and in different situations. Yes, I do. Uh, depending on what division or department you work for, um, I work for a department that, I guess they, they stress having training and being properly trained for all the calls that we take. Um, if you notice in the, in the community, there's always crashes on the road. There's cause and effect for everything. Uh, we have maybe 20 crashes per shift, and our shifts are 7 to 3, 3 to 11, 11 to 7. A minimum of 20 crashes a day. One, people are on their cell phones. Another one, because people are working late hours and they're sleepy. So sometimes they fall asleep at the wheel. Others are medical problems, and they have a heart attack or their diabetic seizures, stuff like that. And that causes it. Some people are just putting their makeup on. They're reading the newspaper, reading a book, and they're driving. Uh, others are texting and driving. Um, some are just in some other planet. <laughs> they're not. They're not here. They're physically here, but mentally they're not. So they're driving. Um, there's thousands of cars out on the road, and people are not paying attention when they're driving. So there's always crashes. Um, another thing that you see out in the community is um, kind of just quality of life issues. You know, different things. Graffiti, stuff like that. We have graffiti abatement program in the department in the city of Far. So we see graffiti, we call that di division, and we tell them, hey, there's graffiti here. It's new, it hasn't been there for longer than a week or two. Um, and they go in, they, they paint over it, or they, they clear it out. The less graffiti you have out in the walls, the better it is for that neighborhood. So we try to do that too. Uh, yes and no. We do receive a lot of training. The thing is with a busy work schedule, we don't get to keep up with a lot of training that, that, that we need to. Yes and no. <laughs> they're effective. Um, they're good trainings, they're pretty sound. Um, the bases of it are good. Um, you know, the, there's never gonna be like, a perfect training because it's a different the the scenarios out on the road and out in out in real life are, are completely different to a controlled environment like trainings. So the trainings are good. Yeah. 
the training that we get is very effective. Um, it's it all depends and also on the on the person receiving that training. If they're if they're grasping that training or if they're understanding it, because they're not understanding it, then they're the ones that are actually messing up on it because they're not going to be able to properly do their jobs. But the training that we receive is pretty effective. Um, if there's changes like updates on our cell phones, we have an update. It's the same thing we do with our trainings. Every two years we have a new kind of training uh, or an update to the, the previous training that we get. So it's kind of, sometimes it gets redundant. We're like, oh, that's training again. And then they add in some new things that come in through the courts. And there's changes that are made. And sometimes the changes are good. Sometimes the changes are like, why did they do that? You know? Um, so it's pretty good. There's different, the trainings are effective. It just depends on what training it is. I do. Again, the training is effective. Uh, there was a lot of time to implement that, that training when we were out on the street, but I think uh, recaps of the training that we have received uh, do help out from time to time, which this department is very good at, at uh, giving us the, the training and the time to train that, that we do need. People skills, social skills, uh, how to handle um, citizens, you know, you go from upper class to lower class, people who live in, I guess maybe like a social, like social aspects of, you know, kind of like a behavioral and stuff like that. I would say the just public speaking. A lot of officers are afraid to talk in front of the public. And that's not just officers, everybody in general. If you put somebody in front of a thousand people to go and address them, they're gonna, they're gonna start sweating, they're gonna be stuttering, they're gonna be like, oh, what do I do, what do I say, where do I go? And I think that's kind of stuff that needs to be done at the school, uh, when you're in high school. Is show people how to be a public speaker. Show people to get in front of a camera and not be afraid. Um, I had a lot of phobias with that when I was in high school. I didn't want to get in front of the camera and didn't want to talk to people in public. But I have a job that requires me to be in front of the public and, you know, to talk to people. Uh, I'm assigned to the Winter Texan Parks and they have um, jams, which they have like an eight piece band with violin and fiddles and guitars and everything. And they asked me to go and sing and I'm like, okay, I'll sing. Um, I'm not that good at singing, but it's fun. Um, but I think just everyday community work that we do, it, I think I do as good as I can. And I've been here almost 20 years and, you know, we've had a lot of different incidents, a lot of major things, some minor things, but the major ones, they stay in your mind forever. They stay implanted in there and you remember those things. We drive around and we remember those those major incidents that have occurred when we passed through when it, where it happened. When you think about it, and that, that was pretty bad. So the new community police and trainings that are coming out are very effective. That's hard um, because it's. I think right now it's gotten bad. I think people, because of the media, um, people view us as uh, kind of like a menace, like a, a problem to society. They think we're out there trying to harm when we're really not. A lot of the older generation still have a lot of that respect for us. And, but I think a lot of the generation, I think it's just different. The older generation has, a, they still respect and they still see us for what we are. You know, why they're trying to help people and uh, protect them. I think the younger culture, because of social media, has a has a, a bad perception of us because of what the media has perceived us to be. But I think overall, you know, people still call us when they need us and help us. So I think underlying, like people still trust us and want us to be there. So. I think it's good. The majority of the public view the officers as honest and professional and courteous and, you know, polite. Um, there's some of the public that do have a different 
view and different perception of officers in general just by the mere uniform. Um, some of those are not happy with the way the officers are or how they've been treated in the past. Some may have had previous incidents where an officer has had to restrain them or to arrest them or have struggled with an officer because of an arrest or because they're interfering with the officer's duties. Um, we get a lot of incidents where we're going to arrest uh, the father figure of a family because he was fighting with a mother. Uh, the kids jump in and they start grabbing the officer when the officer is arresting the dad. Um, and the officer is doing his job by taking the problem from the home, taking him to jail for a day or two. Um, and sometimes the other people on the side, which is part of the family, are affected by that arrest. So it's up to the officer to make a decision, okay, do I affect this family by the arrest or how I arrest the person? Or is it something that I need to take outside, have the kids separated somewhere else? Or is it something that is going to be continuing? So that's a decision that you have to make. Um, my actions are going to dictate what happens afterwards. I think there's a bad perception of police officers right now uh, with the public. Luckily, you know, that's, uh, that's something that's, that's changing and I hope will change in the, in the near future.